Hello, I'm Lowry, I'm the Senior Creator of the Royal College of Physicians Museum in London and I'm going to tell you a short history of the stethoscope today. So the stethoscope is you know, pretty much the iconic image of a hospital doctor. If you watch any uh, TV drama or soap or anything like that set in a hospital, it's almost guaranteed that the doctors in it will have one around their neck. You know, probably even if they work in a specialty that doesn't actually need to listen to the chest that often. The stethoscope was invented in 1816 by a Frenchman called René Lenec and it comes from the Greek words, so steph is Greek for chest, and scope just means an instrument that you examine something with, so chest examiner, effectively. Before the stethoscope, the way that you would examine someone's chest or heart, the way you'd listen to them, was really simple. You'd literally just lay your ear on their chest. And the story that is often told around the next invention of the stethoscope, so it relates directly to this. He was treating an ill young woman, so one of his patients who had heart trouble, and he realised that he was going to need to listen to her heart, so put his ear on her chest. The story goes that at this point, you know, overcome with embarrassment, he was frantically looking around for, you know, how to deal with this situation, and realised that he could roll his paper of notes into a tube and try and use that to listen instead, so, you know, avoiding the need to actually get too close to his patient. To his surprise, the tube actually worked really well, and from this he came up with the idea of fashioning the same kind of tube out of wood, and therefore the first stethoscope. So I think this story's been a bit elaborated over time. In 1816, Lenek was 35, he was an experienced doctor. He'd hoped that he would maybe not be quite that phased by things. In his own book on the stethoscope, in the preface, he writes that in this instance, the normal method, so the ear to chest method, was inadmissible because of the patient's age and gender, so a young woman, and also because she was a bit obese, which meant that it would have been harder to hear anyway. So, as I mentioned, the original model was a simple wooden tube based on the rolled up tube of paper. He quickly refined the design um, and split it into three parts, which improved the sound. The stethoscope spread pretty quickly amongst doctors from then on. Early versions were known as monoral stethoscopes, so literally one-eared, and there were various different designs for these. So, for example, you have ones which come into separate parts to make them easy to carry. This one is one that folded up so that the doctor could keep it in his top hat while he was you know, travelling around visiting his patients. Um, and in the ASP collection we also have some more experimental ones. So for instance, this one is made of glass and it actually looks just like a wine glass until you realise it's got a hole all the way down the centre. Not quite sure how effective it would have been, but it's quite an interesting object. Um, and this one might be a bit familiar to people, but this is a penars type stethoscope. It was used on adults at one point, but now the same design is still used by midwives to listen to the fetal heartbeat in the womb. From the 1850s we get binaural stethoscopes, so monaural, one-eared, binaural is two-eared, so more the design that we know today. Um, and these were supposed to have been designed by an RCP member, Arthur Leard. They were commercially available from um, about 1852 and they you know, spread even faster after that. Designs for the stethoscope have been constantly evolving ever since its invention. And today you can get some really high tech ones if you're willing to spend a bit of extra cash. So things like Bluetooth, the ability to filter up background noise or to record what you're hearing, all features that are available on some modern ones that doctors can use today. There have been some studies in sort of recent years that suggest that the skills needed to diagnose based on what you hear through a stethoscope might be decreasing amongst doctors. But despite that, it's still something which is taught in all medical schools. It's, you know, really key to medical training and to some specialties of medical care. And, you know, the stethoscope is still that sort of really visual, understandable symbol of a doctor. So I doubt they're going to go anywhere anytime soon.